Today I'm going to talk about how to get a remote front-end developer job even as a junior. Stay until the end because I want to share with you a way uh, that will help you double your salary. So if you are someone that is pretty much tired with your career, right? You are tired of being an accountant, a barista, you're tired of working a dead-end job or a boring job really, then front-end development is gonna change that for you entirely and in this video I want to share with you a few ways that you can go ahead and try to actually land a remote developer position. The cool thing is since the pandemic from a few years ago, all positions are fully, fully remote, okay? At least from my client's experience, even though to be frank with you, I would recommend to you to have an in-person job if it's possible, if it's possible and if you'd like to, because you can get more mentorship and stuff like that, you know, it's easier to tap someone on the shoulder than to send them Slack messages and stuff like that. So if you have the option to get a, an in-person job, do it before you even attempt applying or contacting someone to offer you an interview to get a dev job is a portfolio okay i think i mentioned this in many many videos and probably a lot of people mentioned this but you have to show proof you have to show something that can pretty much say that you are qualified for this job so right now if you want to become a front-end developer the, the skills the key skills that i would focus on would be html css those are like given you have to know them you have to be good at them okay nobody cares if you know html but everyone cares if you don't know html and css okay so that's out of the way then the next thing that you need is to learn javascript you need to understand how javascript works because javascript is like the engine okay to this whole thing you cannot do anything without it really there there's literally like if you just know HTML and CSS, the only thing that you can do is websites on Fiverr and you're gonna get paid like 50 bucks per day, per project. You don't wanna have your skills limited just to HTML and CSS. So you need to focus probably 95% of your like study time, okay? Or 95% of your focus should be JavaScript. Because if you understand JavaScript and if you manage not to master it, because mastery takes years really, like even, 10 years, 15 years of working with JavaScript, you'll still find quirks and, and things of the nature, right? There is even a series of books called uh, You Don't Know JavaScript. Your goal shouldn't be mastery, but your goal should be, how can I get the 20% that's gonna give me 80% of the results? So the next thing that you need is to learn one of the most popular libraries, right? There are three of them right now. The most popular ones are Vue, Angular, and React. I'm focusing on React. I've been writing React code for the past six years or something like that and i've only had react jobs i've been teaching react as well but i had students that got view job the framework or the library is not really that important if you understand how to use javascript and you understand the mindset and what those libraries are kind of supposed to be doing what kind of problems they are supposed to solve then you can transition into any library or framework okay so you kind of have to teach yourself to be library or framework agnostic in my opinion i don't want to switch libraries i just want to learn one thing and then use it forever you know i don't want to keep learning new ways of doing things if that makes sense it sound, makes me sound like a bad developer but i just want to get things done okay in the future if i decide hey i just want to learn a new library or something i can pick it up but for the moment it's not needed react is very popular right now react is also paying really really well okay if you know react you can make up to $120,000 a year I had a student that was making that I had another one that was making six figures as well it's gonna offer you that opportunity to make decent money with programming I don't know what would $120,000 a year do for you okay you have to do the maths would you live in a better place would you uh, invest your money into something else would you I don't know buy a house get a mortgage pay your mortgage buy a new car whatever so you have to think about that once you have that portfolio you can start applying for jobs there are two main ways to get jobs in my opinion okay the first one is just applying for jobs which is totally fine but it's more like a flamethrower approach right you pretty much spam indeed and all the other job sites that works 100 percent. no problem with that i actually recommend it in my program as well but then there is the other way which takes a bit more time and you have to be a bit more proactive with it, which is finding people that are currently hiring. So hiring managers or recruiters or finding startups that uh, just got some funding, right? You are approaching those people and you ask them to give you a shot for an interview, okay? So then in the interview, you bring up your portfolio, you prepare yourself for uh, the technical interview. I've made a video about that. You can search it on my channel uh, about the most common JavaScript interview questions. And then also you can prepare some algorithms. In my opinion, I don't think it's needed to know that many algorithms, but if you see them coming up over and over and over again in your interviews, you should definitely prepare for that. So right now I'm doing something called Sun Algo Sunday. 
right, with my students. And every Sunday we are doing just algorithms. Even though I don't think they are necessary, it's nothing bad to practice them. I kind of changed my mind a little bit. Before I used to say, don't do algorithms, blah, blah, blah. But now I do believe it's better to do them than not to do them, okay? Obviously, focus as much as you can on building your project. That was uh, something that my mentor told me when I started. He told me, hey, stop doing so many algorithms and build some freaking projects, okay? Because I was doing too much of that. I was saying about the direct approach where you can find people that are hiring and you can approach them. The way you approach them is very, very simple. You look them up on LinkedIn and then you connect with them. After you connect with them, you see if they have some posts or something like that and you like them, you comment them, you leave a valuable insight that you found about that person's uh, post, for example. You don't really have to be creative, just acknowledge what that person said and that's it. And then after one day or so, you can send that person a message. Hey, I saw that you have an open position. Uh, what kind of developer are you hiring? So feel free to reach out to people, okay? Nobody is gonna bite you, okay? <laughs> Nobody is gonna judge you for reaching out to people. It's actually very, very normal. Most of my freelance clients, I got them like that. It's totally okay to reach out. Nobody's gonna hate you. Nobody's gonna think that you are weird for doing that. So stop that. It's better to do that than to just post on LinkedIn the things that you've been learning. Another skill set that you actually have to cultivate if you want to become a remote developer is communication. It's very important to communicate with other people in your team because if you look at your left and then at your right, there is no one. Okay, it's just you and your laptop on an island, but then you still have to deliver a project. Whenever you have a difficulty, whenever you don't understand something, you have to reach out and ask. This is pretty, pretty important. And also when you're gonna get a job, you'll see that it's not only about coding, right? So probably right now you are coding a lot, maybe two, three hours per day after your job. You would assume that after you get your first dev job, you'll also be working eight hours per day coding nonstop. But it's not like that. It's not like that at all. You'll have meetings here and there, and then you'll probably be coding like two, three hours per day. The rest of the time is like spent either researching, doing nothing, procrastinating, whatever you might be thinking of. It's not like you are working 100%. And that brings me to the last part of this video, which is you can take theoretically freelance projects outside of your work. So once you figure out how everything works, once you figure out like patterns, how you have to write your code so you can be efficient, once you understand how to organize your time and stuff like that, then you can take projects, okay? So you can either start to freelance on Upwork like I was doing, or you could take a second job. I have uh, students that are pretty much working two, three hours per day and they don't know what to do with their free time. If you want to make more money, you want to double your salary. Let's say you are making 80 grand in this new job that you're going to get. You can get a second job that makes you another 80 grand. You need to learn how to juggle two jobs, but it's definitely possible. The only problem would be like, having meetings that interfere, but I'm sure that if you are a nice guy and you know how to communicate, then you'll be able to convince the team to move the meetings around so they can fit your schedule, okay? Something to keep in mind, something that you might wanna try when you get there, because hey, one year of hard work where you get paid double, 160 per year, will put you way, way ahead of everyone else. And then you can transition into $120,000 job, and then you can take the time off, move to Mexico, be on Cancun on a beach or whatever, drink your tequilas after work. Whatever you want, it's possible, but you have to be resourceful and you have to be creative with how you approach work, how you approach life, how you organize yourself, how you organize people around you. What are your priorities, right? Because I see so many people that are literally like stuck. They are stuck in their head trying to figure out what applications to do, what code to write, and they're not doing anything. If you are feeling like that, then you need to change it because time is passing. Time is passing and unfortunately we are not getting any young. Anyway, that was me. I hope this video was insightful. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe for more videos. Peace.